So 4.4 is the quadratic formula, and that's on pages 244 to 257 in your text. Our curriculum outcome is 20.8 to demonstrate understanding of quadratic equations, including the solution of single variable equations, and systems of linear quadratic and quadratic equations in two variables. Again, we're just going to be talking about the first part today and leave the second two parts for later in the course. Our lesson objectives, number one, to be able to derive the quadratic formula by using the standard form of a quadratic equation and the process called completing the square, which is why we learned that last lesson. Number two, to be able to use a quadratic formula to find solutions to a quadratic equation. And number three, to be able to identify the nature of the roots of a quadratic equation by looking at something called the discriminant of the quadratic formula. So last semester we used the quadratic formula, but we didn't really know where it actually came from. And so today we're going to develop the quadratic formula by completing the square. So that's the method we learned yesterday with a quadratic and standard form. Remembering that a quadratic and standard form looks like ax squared plus bx plus c. And also recalling that the quadratic formula is x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all divided by 2a. We're going to get from here to here in about seven or eight steps and by using completing the square. All right, so here we have the standard form ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. And here we have an actual example. So we're going to complete the square on the left hand side and we're going to get an answer. And while we're doing that, every step that we do on the left hand side, we're going to do on the right hand side as well, except we won't be using nice numbers. We're going to be using variables instead. So first step. 2x squared minus 5x equals negative 1. What I've done here is I've moved the 1 over to the right-hand side. So over here, I'm going to move the c over to the right-hand side. So I get ax squared plus bx equals, now that was a positive c, now it becomes a negative c. Next thing I've done here, I've taken everything and I've divided it by 2. So if I divide everything by 2 on this side, here I'm going to have to divide everything by the letter out in front of x squared, which happens to be a. So if I do that, I get x squared, because I've divided by a. I get b over a x, and that equals negative c over a. So the next thing I've done here is I've taken half of negative 5 over 2. And half of negative 5 over 2 is negative 5 over 4. And I've squared it. And when you square a fraction, so negative 5 over 4, when that thing gets squared, that becomes 25 over 16. And that's why I've added 25 over 16 and I've added it onto both sides. Over here, this gets a little trickier. When I take half of a fraction, so when I took half of 5 over 2, it became 5 over 4. So the denominator actually doubled. So when I take half of b over a, that becomes b over 2a. And when I square that thing, that becomes b squared over 4a squared. So what I end up getting is I get x squared plus b over a, x, and the number that I'm adding to this side is b squared over 4a squared. So I'm going to do the same thing on the right-hand side. I had negative c over a, so I'm going to add b squared over 4a squared. All right, our next step here is that we factored the left-hand side as a binomial squared. So we're going to factor the left-hand side over here as a binomial squared. And so remember that we took half of this thing for a reason, half of b over a. This number here is the thing that goes inside the brackets. So that is x plus b over 2a squared. And then on the right-hand side, I've found a common denominator with a negative half. Now it becomes negative 8 over 16 because I had a 25 over 16. So here, if I'm going to find a common denominator, I have a 4a squared here, so I'm going to need a 4a squared here. Well, I have an a already, which means I have to multiply the top and the bottom by 4a. So that ends up being negative 4ac on the top, and that becomes 4a squared on the bottom. So hopefully some of this is kind of taking shape in your head. We know what we're trying to get to in the, with the quadratic formula. We know that there's a b squared and a minus 4ac underneath the root sign. And here we have a minus 4ac and a b squared, so we're well on our way. Our next step, adding the right-hand side. So I can leave this as x plus b over 2a squared. If I add the right-hand side, I can do that because I have the same denominator. So now I have b squared minus 4ac. The order doesn't matter in how I add these things. So instead of starting with a negative number, I'm going to start with a positive number instead. So I get b squared minus 4ac. Our next step is to get rid of this square, uh, the squared sign. 
by taking the square root of both sides. And when I did that, I took the square root of the 17, and that's just root 17. I took the square root of the 16, which is just plain old 4, and I remembered to put in a positive and negative. So on my right-hand side over here, I get x plus b over 2a. If I take the square root of that side, I take the square root of this side, I get plus or minus. I can't take the square root of b squared minus 4ac, so I leave that underneath the square root sign. But I can take the square root of 4a squared. The square root of 4a squared is just 2a. Now we're getting really close to um, that quadratic formula. On the left hand side, I move this negative 5 quarters over by adding 5 quarters to both sides. Here I'm going to move it over by subtracting negative, uh, or subtracting b over 2a. So now I get negative b over 2a plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And my final answer on the left hand side here, since I have the same denominator, I can just add the tops and I can do the same thing over here. x equals negative b plus or minus b squared minus 4ac. And that, since I have the same denominator, I can write that as a single fraction. And here we have our quadratic formula. So all we did was complete the square it's a little bit more difficult only because we're using variables instead of numbers. But if you can do it um, with numbers and you know the steps in order to do it with numbers, then you should be able to do it with variables as well. So now we're going to talk about the nature of the roots. Now, we need to know why we actually need the quadratic formula. And the quadratic formula just allows us to find our roots or our x-intercepts no matter what the quadratic looks like. So now we want to find out what the nature of those roots are. What types of numbers are those x-intercepts? So it's important to note that we can use a part of the quadratic formula to help us determine the nature of the roots, the type of numbers that a quadratic equation actually has as roots. And this is what we call the discriminant. So the discriminant tells us this, and that discriminant is what's underneath the root sign. It's the b squared minus 4ac. So that took a lot longer than I thought. Um, when d is equal to b squared minus 4ac, that's your discriminant, we're going to talk about what the roots are. So if this happens to be positive, so that means we're going to take the square root of a positive number, our roots are two distinct real roots. So they're real roots because they're numbers in the real set of numbers, and they're distinct because we can actually find out what they are. If we try and take the square root of a negative number, because remember that's what we're doing here, we're just taking the square root, that's a discriminant, um, you can't actually take the square root of a negative number, so we don't get any real roots at all. You do get something called imaginary roots, which we don't really cover in this level of math at all. And if we were to try to take the square root of zero, we're going to end up with, remember that it's a quadratic formula, and so we're going to end up with a number like negative five plus or minus the square root of zero over two. Well, we can't take the square root of zero, so we do not, we're not actually adding or subtracting. So what we end up is with just one distinct real root. We have negative five over two. So we'll end off with a couple examples here. It says use a quadratic formula to solve the following quadratic equation. We have three x squared plus five x minus two equals zero. So this may or may not be able to be factored, but if you don't even want to try factoring it, um, then you go straight to the quadratic formula, you're going to find your two roots, um, no matter what they are, whether they're um, decimals or fractions or whatever, or whole numbers, you're going to be able to find them with the quadratic formula. So the quadratic formula, again, is x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Now this is going to be easier than completing the square because we've actually already completed the square to be able to use this formula. This is going to be easier than factoring because we don't have to go through a, a bunch of different combinations of numbers. Um, we just plug in the numbers and see what comes out of it. So negative b, well it was a positive 5 here, so that's now negative 5, plus or minus. b squared, which is 25, minus 4 times a, which is 3, times c, which is 2 all over 2 times a, which is 2 times 3. That ends up being negative 5 plus or minus the square root of 25 minus, well, 4 times 3 is uh, 12 times 2, which is 24. So that's 25 minus 24, which is just 1. And that's all over 6. So I get negative 5 plus or minus 1 over 6. So I have my two roots. I have negative 5 plus 1 over 6. So negative 5 plus 1 is negative 4 over 6. So negative 4 over 6 ends up being negative 2 thirds is one of our roots. And negative 5 minus 1, which is negative 6 divided by 6, is just negative 1. So we end up with two roots. Um, 
they are negative 2 over 3 and negative 1. Now, we probably would be able to find those by factoring, by using decomposition, but we still get the same answer by using the quadratic formula. Our second example is we're going to determine the nature of the roots of the following quadratic equation by using the discriminant. So the discriminant, again, is just this part that's underneath the root sign. So in order to use a discriminant, we need to make sure that this whole thing um, equals 0. So we need to move this 9 over. So we get 2x squared minus 8x plus 9 equals 0. And so we're just going to look at the b squared minus 4ac part. And we're going to see what type of number we get. And then that'll determine what sort of roots we have. So for example, in the top one, we had two distinct roots because we had a positive number underneath the root sign. So b squared is negative 8 squared. Well, that's positive 64. Minus 4 times 2 times 9. That's 4 times a, which is 2, and 9, which is c. So I get 64 minus um, 4 times 2 is 8. 8 times 2 is 72. That is a negative 8. So that means we can't take the square root of a negative number. And that means that we have no real roots. And that just means that it's um, that our parabola doesn't cross the x-axis. We know that it opens up because this is a positive x squared. So it really just looks something like that. Um, there's no real roots because it doesn't actually cross the x-axis. So in summary, the quadratic formula can be derived by completing the square with the equation ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. And when you do that, you get x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all divided by 2a. And yes, you will need to know how to do that. And I, yes, it will be on the exam. Um, the discriminant, which we call b squared minus 4ac, just this number underneath the root sign, will tell us the nature of the roots. And we're going to get two real distinct roots if this number underneath, if b squared minus 4ac, if that happens to be a positive number. So as long as it's positive, we can take the square root of it, and we're going to end up getting two different um, roots. We're going to get one distinct real root if the number underneath this root sign happens to be 0 because then we'll just get negative b over 2a as our other root, or as our only root. And we're not going to get any real roots, roots if the number underneath the root sign is a negative number, because we can't take the square root of a negative number. And as we just saw in the last example, that just means that the parabola doesn't cross the x-axis, which means no real roots, no x-intercepts. So your assignment is on pages 254 to 257. Good luck, and we'll see you in class.